It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call shots. Todd, would you like to skip the intro to this podcast? Yes, I would like to skip the intro to the podcast. I'd pay money to skip the intro to this podcast. Oh, shit. Can I pay money just to skip the whole podcast in general? Uh, no, sorry. That's, that's going a little too far. Fuck. <laughs> that's one thing that I was saying when we were watching Stranger Things Season 2, which is what we're going to be talking about on this episode of Shots. Hi, everybody. Um... That's one thing. I was like, I will never skip the intro to Stranger Things. It's too good. Oh, yeah. It's some real shit. Dude. We stayed up last night, Todd. We binged watch Stranger Things 2 or, you know, Season 2 or whatever the fuck you want to call it. They call it Stranger Things 2. We started about, what, 6 p.m. 6 or so? Yeah, and we finished about 2. Yeah. So we, we sat there for, for a solid, like, 8 to 9 hours. You almost basically uh, worked an entire shift of work. Yeah, you almost gave in. <laughs> you almost gave in there at the end, though. I got close, dude, because like my body is so old and shitty and uh, and soft. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm like at the end there. I was I was feeling I was feeling weak. Um, it wasn't it wasn't until like it started to really ramp up. It kind of gave me a second wind. It was getting so good, but that's you know let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. So, Stranger Things two, the second season of Stranger Things came out. Um, if you haven't been following along. On a, on our journey here, uh, I introduced Todd to Stranger Things, what a couple of months ago. Yep. Um, essentially, we recorded an episode of the main show, and in it, I expressed I think I talked about a trailer for Stranger Things two or something like that, and, uh, and Todd was like, "Oh, I've never watched it." I was like, "Oh man, you really need to watch it." And that night, we watched the entire thing in one sitting. Is that um? Is that when I'm like? Is that where we thought we were only going to watch one episode, and we just ended up watching yes. it all yeah yes we we thought we were gonna watch only one episode and then like one episode two so all right i gotta pause <laughs> <laughs> and we just wound up watching the whole fucking thing yeah. we spent our entire day watching stranger things and it was great and uh so we knew instantly you know once todd fell in love with the show we knew instantly that we were going to be watching stranger things 2 together the only wrinkle in this was that my fiance is also a big fan of Stranger Things. She's actually who I watched the first season with when it first came out. So I knew I was going to have to get, it was going to have to be a day where her, Todd, and I could all sit and watch it together in one long session. Yeah, sit there and put and nine uh, hours ready to do this shit. <laughs> yeah. And then that's exactly what we did. Um, so non spoilery thoughts. Uh, let's, let's start this off. Let's, you know, the way we usually do these, this is a spoiler cast. Um, so we are going to go to kind of go into full detail uh, in this episode of Shots on what we thought about Stranger Things Season 2. But before we do that, uh, let's give sort of our generalized impressions. How, how did you feel about this season? So I think me and you share similar opinions of this, but it's still a very good show. It was a very good season, um, but I still prefer the original season. I prefer Season 1. Season 1 is... Uh... Mm. I think it has better pacing. Yeah, see, season one is um, season one is like a perfect season of television almost. Yeah. And season two just had such huge like shoes to fill. And uh, I'll get into this into some more specifics later. Um, I don't you know, I don't want to go into spoilers yet. But what I will say about season what what season two does really well is the way it handles the characters, both new and old. Yeah. And upon sort of reflecting on season two, I think that's my big takeaway from it is like season one was so good because of all the iconic moments and the world building and introducing us. Season two doesn't have as much of that, but it does have some really good character moments and like it, it it's it's filled with just extra character development. Yeah. And um and you know, I really I still really, really liked it. Do I think it was as good as season one? No. But I still really, really enjoyed it, and I think you know I think we're in agreement that it's still probably Netflix's best original show. Yep, definitely. Um, so, anyway, from here on in, we are going to get into full spoilers. 
Um, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about the goings on in season two, the ending and everything. So if you have not watched it yet, go watch it and come back. We can wait anyway. So yeah. Uh, what do we, what do we want to dig into first here? Talking he about- likes it cold. <laughs> he likes it cold. <laughs> that was sort of the running gag, <laughs> like <laughs> sitting there and watching it, like just just sitting there and like every time Will would do that weird ass shit when he was possessed by the mind flare. Yeah, he likes it cold, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. Let me there, go, there was bitch. A couple of moments um, with Will, like dude, there was some good shit because it was like you had he likes it cold. He's like. You shouldn't have upset him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this was something that I that I pointed out when we were watching, I think, the last episode. I was like, you know what? Because, you know, season two really is kind of Will's story more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, that's what I was trying to like. I feel like you were kind of like, oh, we haven't seen Eleven this much. I'm like, not surprised because this is Will. But like, Eleven story was the last season. This is Will's story. So Yeah, it Will's, you know... It's it's interesting because what they could have done with Will after season one, right? They could have just killed his ass. Oh yeah, in season one, and it would have just it would have been just as affecting. You know what I mean? But they know that he's alive, and it's more interesting because you know now it's like he he's become sort of this uh, early on in the season he becomes this sort of conduit for a new threat mm-hmm. in the Upside Down, and um. And, you know, and I, I pointed this out when we were watching the, the last episode. I was like, this kid, I think his name's like Noah Schnapp or something yeah, like he, that. Yeah, he's basically, he was, you, I think you said uh, he was outacting everybody. <laughs> he was. Like, he's incredible yeah, he, in this season. Like, he's so good for a child actor. Like, like stacked up against all these other adult actors. Okay. Like, my, my big standout from season one was definitely Winona Ryder. Yeah. And she's still great. She's still great in this season. But, like, the kid playing Will is fantastic Mm -hmm. in this season definitely and it's it's so funny because and this is the point that i made to my fiance who who, she ended up falling asleep when she was watching it with us and she finished up the last few episodes that she missed today and i caught the, the i watched the entire last episode again with her and um afterwards i was like you know this season to me like there the there's a lot of like weirdness with it because there is a in a lot of ways, it follows very similar beats to the first season. Mm-hmm. Like, they try to have their iconic, you know, like the iconic moment with the lights in the house. Their version of that is, oh, now we have the tunnel maps yeah. from Will and everything like that. And, uh, you know, Will was basically a prisoner in the first season, and he kind of still is in this season. And, um, you know, there are a lot of, like, corollaries there. Eleven is still the one that has to overexert herself and save the day and stuff like yeah. that. But... It, it, there's a there's a lot of weird corollary there, and then even even to the even to the point of like we're still naming the big bad after a D and D character, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I, like I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it too, but there you know there's a lot of corollary to be made there for better or for worse, right? But like, you know, it, at the end of the day, like like I still really I think this season is is special because of the way it treats the characters and because of the unlikely pairings. You know, yes, that's actually something I really enjoyed. Like they just kind of like paired like random motherfuckers together, honestly. And dude, the the it, Steve and Dustin name a more iconic duo, bro. That is, <laughs> dude, like that is legit good. That was like honestly my favorite uh like character combination out of the se- the season. That's what my fiance was saying. Like at the end of the last episode, she was she was like t- like why did Steve become my favorite character this season? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. He was always a good character. He was always one of those like, oh, he was like a douche kind of, and then he kind of redeems himself, and and now like he's a great character yeah. in season two. I think me and you said the same thing. Like, I think we were basically saying like, dude, Steve's fucking great. <laughs> like, and I think that I I almost feel like season two retreads a lot of similar ground on purpose mm-hmm. because I I think the reason it does that is because it wants to feel like sort of the flip flop version of season one because if you think of season one right. Which two characters had the most focus? It was Mike and it was Elle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And those characters have the least amount of focus in season two. Mm-hmm. Like, by far. Um, in fact, when my fiance was trying to name off the characters, she, like, forgot Mike's name. Like, that's... That's funny. Mike is such a, like... He's almost like a background character in this. Like, he's not 
a huge deal in this season at all. Well, like, because the they first kinda, season they kinda, was his story. They kind of have him like, you know, he's like, he's kind of like not really, kind of even really paying attention to the group, honestly. He's just, no, because he's yeah. so hung up on Eleven still. Yeah. The big, the big issue that I have with with this season in general is there were things that were introduced that were very interesting concepts to the world of Stranger Things. So the the opening minutes of the season deal with uh, well, kind of the reveal that oh you you mean when uh you mean when they were playing uh, Dark Knight <laughs> yeah that was my first comment I was like what is this Dark Knight <laughs> we're watching right now they're doing like a bank robbery and it's sort of it reveals that there are other kids out there that kind of survived and escaped you know the experiments and everything and and we're introduced to the character of Eight you know who is kind of Eleven's sister in a weird way and she has powers as well and she's out there doing her thing and there's a episode seven ironically is like this weird standalone anime trash episode where 11 like goes and seeks her out and uh and like learn some shit from her that episode was so weird to me that was such a weird throwaway episode yeah um my issue with that that was a really interesting concept right we didn't deal with that until episode seven, mm-hmm. like almost at the ass end of the I, season. I, I, I think it was me that you know, said this, and it's just like as we got to episode seven, it's just like meanwhile, an eleven story. <laughs> yeah, like like the 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 structure of season two is so weird to me because like everybody and you you made this point too when we when we sort of ramped up to the conclusion. Like, everybody is scattered doing their own things, Mm -hmm. and then everybody sort of converges back onto this central focus. Yeah. And and, and that's despite the fact that that it is following a similar blueprint to season one. I still, like, I I don't know if I like that structure as much. Um, It's interesting. But then, like, I think think the issue you run into there is when you have these characters sort of scattered to the winds and doing their own thing and having their own little arcs, you have more potential for character moments, but you also have more potential for those arcs not feeling as complete. Yeah. So, for example, like, I was not satisfied by the shit that Eleven was doing in this season because, really, think about it. All Eleven does in this season, essentially, is she, you know, they, they interplay with Hopper in a really good way. I really love the Hopper-Eleven dynamic. Yeah, same. How she's... Not even, not even figuratively. She's literally his daughter now. Yep. Um, as the epilogue reveals. Yep. And and yeah, like like there's the father daughter dynamic between Hopper and Eleven, which I loved. But then like really, all she does is learn some daddy lessons from Hopper, goes and finds Eight, and then comes back and saves the day. And that's Eleven's story in season hey man, two. She went to see her mom too. Yeah, like that's and that's all cool. Like that's I like all of that. But like again, just it's. You, you you run the risk of not having fleshed out every story when you when you throw so many darts on the board. Yeah, not all of them are going to be in the bullseye. You know what I mean? I feel you. Like that's what this season is. This season is taking a whole bunch of darts, throwing it at the dartboard, and not all of them hit the bullseye. Some of them did, but not all of them did. Another one that fell flat for me was the shit that was going on between Jonathan and uh, Nancy. Holy shit, that scene was so awkward. There's some weird shit in the season. Like, like they go to this bunker of this like conspiracy theorist because they they get evidence that. You know, their their whole the impetus for their whole thing was like, okay, you know, we want to satisfy the Barb fans, so Justice let's give Barb, Barb a bunch of shout outs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So they uh so they go to this conspiracy theorist with proof of, of basically the the new sort of head of the Hawkins lab, who's another new character, and he's good. All the new characters are good. My boy, Doctor um, Owens. Doctor Owens, that's his name. And they go to him and they, they basically have recorded evidence of him admitting to Barb's death and everything like that because Barb's parents still think that she's alive and, and they're going to sell her house to fund a private detective and this, that, and the other. Yeah. So so they go to this conspiracy theorist to try to find ways to, uh, to try to find ways to like get the word out and he ends up mailing it to like the Chicago Tribune and shit like that. But like... In the interim, they just sit there and get drunk with the dude, drinking vodka and like having sex in his bunker, <laughs> and like staying the night there. <laughs> and they he even makes and the guy knows they had sex because the next morning he made like a weird joke saying how was the pullout, <laughs> <laughs> which is just it's just fucking weird. Like just it, like that entire thing. Like why couldn't they just 
go to the dude's house and say, hey, like, I have evidence that this actually happened. Can you get the word out? And just, yeah, I can do that. Bye. Yeah, and then another, uh, <laughs> well, they had to, they had to get that ship selling. That's, that's the main reason that was a thing. But, uh. It's just weird, man. It's just fucking weird. And then, like, yeah, there's, there's this other weird I, scene. I, think, yeah, I was about to bring it up is the, the moment with, uh, what's, what's, I don't remember the character's name, but, uh, with Mrs. Wheeler. Yeah, so there's this moment where this new character, Billy, yeah, right? that's his name. So yeah. he, um, he's a great new character. I actually really like his character a lot. He's this sort of like, he's kind of the, he's, you know, he's the, he's the new bully. He's kind of a psychopath. And like, he's played really well with, um, I don't remember the actor's name, but you pointed out. It's the actor that plays the Red Ranger and the new Power Rangers yeah. movie. Um, he's played super duper well. Like he, he's really, he's a really fantastic actor. And he plays the psychopath character kind of really well. And then, you know, you come to find out later. Those 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 are the two things that were interesting to me. Was the character of Eight and the character of Billy and his stepsister, Max. Yeah. I wanted to know more about them. And we didn't get any of that until basically the last three episodes yeah, or so season, of the season. I think it was like mainly like season eight. I mean, season eight, uh, episode eight. Yeah. that That's when we got that shit. And like... We didn't get enough of it, and it wasn't satisfying enough to me because those are the things I was most interested in. But anyway, that's another thing entirely. Um, you know, you, you come to understand that he is the way he is because of his relationship with his father and stuff like that. And he's he's a likable asshole. You know what I mean? You you like to see him fail because he's a piece of shit yeah. and he's a psycho. But you understand why he is the way he yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, like you, they even had the scene where they did show him vulnerable. Like, he was even, like, you know tears running down his face and all that and i mean yeah like it's so clear that it like it's so clear that he, he does that fight with steve in the kitchen where he's basically he's basically playing heath ledger's joker he's just sitting there like laughing as steve is like punching the you know the fuck out of him and then um and then he's like nobody tells me what to do and mm -hmm. he's beating the fuck out of steve and crying while he's doing mm -hmm. it and you can tell that he's just imagining like this is what he wishes he could do to his father yeah you know and he's a really good he's a really good textured character but anyway there's a weird moment with Billy where he's looking for Max in the last couple of episodes and and he he goes to he goes to Mike's house looking for for Mike or Nancy and you know Mike's mom answers the door and she's getting like all turned on by this like 15 or 16 year old <laughs> kid you know <laughs> Like he's, I wouldn't say he was any older. He's still in school, so he can't be any older than like seventeen, eighteen, you know. And she's getting all like turned on by. It was weird. It was weird. <laughs> there's some weird shit in this in this season. I was like, there's some like uncomfortableness, you know. Yeah. Um, piggybacking off of that though, the parents have a much bigger role in this season than they did in the like, first. Uh, one. A couple families in general have a bigger role. Yeah, we got to shout out Lucas's family yes. because Lucas's family is love. Lucas's sister is love. That shit is hilarious. I don't remember her name, but she is hilarious. She, the the child actor they got for her has like perfect comedic timing. She's so funny, <laughs> and I loved the I loved the clip that we got of uh of uh like Lucas is is having breakfast with his family. And he's like, he's like, Dad, what do you do when Mom's wrong? And he's like, Your Mom's never, never wrong, son. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Oh, so good. And you know, and, and they they ham up, you know, Mike's dad being the typical like negligent '80s father, you know, like like they they ham that up in a big bad way. Well, that's good. Um, it's, it's very good. Like they're they they are the parents of the of the uh, century. Yeah, like I think. I think uh, Dustin is actually like he goes and he's looking for Mike and he's like, "Sweetie, where's Mike?" And she says this. And he's like, "Oh, well, is Nancy there?" Sweetie, where's Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> and Dustin is just like, "You're of absolutely no help whatsoever." You know that <laughs> type shit. <laughs> and uh, language. And it's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, and it's true. And you know, the, the parents in this show. I have to just drive this home. And we get a little bit of it in season one, but the parents in this show are such kind of unilaterally pieces of shit, um, with the exception of Winona Ryder's character. Yeah. Like, not bad people, but they're just pieces of shit in terms of, like, you think of the Wheelers, right, who have no idea what's going on with their kids mm -hmm. and don't really care. So the care. fact that, like, Mike was able to hide Eleven in their, in their basement. <laughs> For God knows how long, you know, and, like... And, and like, just they have no idea what's going on. And I know, the, I know the common defense is, oh, well, it was the '80s. It was a different time. No, I'm sorry. Like, 
that shit don't fly. <laughs> like, I was not born that long after the events of this show. That shit, it was not like that. Like, I'm sorry. Um, and then, like, on top of it, fucking, uh, you, you look at uh, Dustin's mom, right, when the cat's dead. Why is your, like, what, 13 to 15-year-old son being your emotional support when your cat is dead? That Yeah, that's, like, that was... I honestly enjoyed that dynamic between the two, though. It was, it was, it was I, I didn't amusing. hate it, but it, it was, was weird. Amusing to me. Well, it was weird to me because I'm just like, dude, like, like you're a mom. You don't need to be sitting here freaking your son out, crying and shit well, like that. Over, I, I, I understand it weird. from a personal thing. So, well, that's true, and and it does seem like, and it does, and I, I I can understand that too. You know, my mom was single mom for a long time. It seems like Dustin's dad is not around. Yeah. Like, I don't think we ever saw Dustin's dad, so I think she's a single mom type shit. So, I understand that. At the same time, I was a little bit like, you know, one thing that my mom always did and that I always respected. I'm not trying to get, like, hashtag real talk here. But, like, (laughs) when she was a single mom, she never let me know how hard it was. Yeah. You know? Anyway. So, just... It's it's weird, and then like even even Hopper, in some ways is he's a he's a good dad to Eleven, but in some ways he's he's really flawed because he as a character is really flawed. Oh yeah, and um, I don't know. I just I, I I really liked a lot of I liked the way that this season focused on character, um, and that that's I think its biggest strength. Like like it's it's what I always say. Like its biggest strength is its biggest weakness. The the fact that it spread its seeds all over the field, um sort of gave these characters room to grow together, yeah. but it also gave them room to grow apart to the viewer. Like when, when you're watching them, like not, not all of those, not all of those threads are going to be satisfying. Mm-hmm. What is satisfying. And I, I shouted out the new characters. All of the new characters are great. So, I mean, we, we got to shout out our boy, Bob, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me be real right. with you. So I, I walked out, and my family was watching uh, episode two, and it was like where he was like in the Dracula costume. Yeah, and I kind of I was like, my boy, my boy, <laughs> my boy. So I'm R.I.P. So you guys, uh, you bar you barber fans out there, you got you don't know pain. She was yeah, at the- least at least you weren't given eight episodes to get to know and love Barbara. That's some real <laughs> shit. And they they played this shit so good, thinking he was gonna survive. These oh, they bitches. and you know, as soon as soon as the season began, because Sean Astin, you know, he doesn't do a whole hell of a lot, but I knew he was still kind of too big of a name to be on TV on a as a recurring role. You know? Oh, I mean, yeah, I so, I, I, I think I said it I said it pretty early on. You said it pretty early on. I'm like, dude, this dude's dying. He's, he's gonna he's dead. I, like. Like I liked him basically immediately. He's a likable character, and like he's what's interesting about Bob, and what I like the most about Bob, is that they very the show very smartly did not let us see too much of Bob's life. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't let us see too much of his like past or his family or anything like that. He he was in there a lot. He wormed his way in there, and it's sort of like. Because of the sort of history of the show, I didn't trust him for a while. I liked him, but I didn't trust him. I trusted him from the get-go. Because I was sitting there, I was going like, oh, the the plot twist is going to be this motherfucker is like an FBI agent undercover, (laughs) you know, and he's trying to, like, they they want somebody who's close to Will, you know, and to keep tabs on Will and this, that, and the other. And uh, no, Bob's just a good dude. He's just a good dude who just loves Joyce and loves Joyce's family and ends up dying for them, you know? And uh, ends up being their superhero. Damn straight. Um. <laughs> they, had, they had to get me at the end of that in the fucking epilogue. They had to. They had to fucking get me with that fucking drawing. Yeah, pictures. there's like a pan out, and there's like a drawing of Bob, like with a superhero cape on and shit like that. He's a great character. Yeah. He's he's he was great, and Sean Astin does a great job of playing him of just this nice, lovable, doughy sort of guy. Um, you know, he's kind of kind of geeky, and he, uh, you know, he's Bob the Brain. You know, like he's. Uh, He's good. Like he's he's really good and and he's a great new character and you know this was the reason I was so glad that we were watching it together because it's so nice to feed off of another person's energy when you're watching yeah. a scene like this. Yeah. Cuz you're watching it and and like you were saying, they play the audience like a fiddle. They knew exactly what they were doing. Bro. It reminded me of the ending of uh, Get Out. I feel where, like yeah. 
where like you you feel like you know something's gonna happen and then it gets flipped on its ear and then stranger things flips it on its ear again it's like oh shit maybe he is gonna survive you know because you you're you know you're spending the whole season being like all right this dude's fucking dead and then you know his fortunes sort of turn you think he's gonna die his fortunes turn he seems like he's gonna live and then he steps out and what happens todd i don't even want to say it those fucking demodogs <laughs> Whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. those bitches. They... Demodogs fucked his ass up. Oh, it was bad, dude. It was so bad. So. And then I, you know, I already talked about Billy, and um, I really like the character of Max. Yeah. Mad Max. Yeah. She's really good. She wasn't given as much love as I would have liked in terms of her backstory. The only thing we really know about her is that she, you know, she moved away. It seems like she was maybe like kind of a problem child. She, her, I think it was what, her mom married Billy's dad. Yeah. I think. Yeah. She's from like California and stuff like that. She has, she has an interesting dynamic with Billy. Um, Billy's like a total piece of shit to her, but you can tell there is a little bit of love and respect there, like underlying. Um, and then like by the end of, by the end of the season, like she kind of lets, she kind of lets Billy know who's boss. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was some good shit. And I really love. I really love that she ended up with Lucas because that was one thing, a bummer in season one. I was like, I don't give a fuck about Lucas. And in this one, like Lucas was a standout character to me. Yeah, Lucas, uh, they definitely gave some more love to Lucas in general. So They gave more love to the characters that needed it and they let the characters that didn't need more love, they let them take a back seat. And that was really smart. Yeah. Um, Like like I said, Mike and and Eleven took a back seat this season so that characters like Lucas can shine and... It was nice that Lucas kind of got the girl in the end, even if that meant my boy Dustin didn't. Boy, that shit, um, that shit hurt me. That, that shit hurt me at the dance. And yeah, in the epilogue when he's like going around and asking people to dance and he keeps getting rejected. You know, but it gets turned around because then Nancy comes and dances with him and it's really sweet. Mm-hmm. And um, that, that's that's what I really love about Stranger Things, even more so than the weird like Lovecraftian world building that's going on. Um, I do want to talk about that in a second. <laughs> Um, more so than that, it's such a character-based show, and uh, and I really love all of these characters. And it's it is rare for a show to introduce a cast of new characters as perfectly as they have. Yeah, invariably, in a new show, like they introduce new characters, and you're like, ah, oh, this character is a piece of shit. I don't like this character. Like, you know, whatever. This character doesn't have enough, enough texture. All of these characters feel like natural integrations into the Stranger Things fold. Yeah, definitely. And I really like where everything ends up. I want to talk about the ending. How how did you feel about the ending? All right, so it's not just the epilogue, like the ending. The ending of it. Yeah, it was all right. Essentially, what what I mean by that, how do you feel? Where do you think the status quo is in terms of the things that are going on on the Upside Down? So I think I said it to you. I think I said it to you as like the credits were rolling. And I'm like, what, is this motherfucker just going to be strong enough to say fuck you and open the gate his damn self? Well, not only that, but, like, he knows where they are now without a host. Yeah, he was legit over the school. He was sitting right yeah. over the school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he he doesn't need a host to be his quote-unquote spy anymore, mm-hmm. you know? He can, like, see so, into like, the, the regular world. Yeah, so it's 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 really interesting. And, you know, and and I feel like... Season three, I think. I think a big thing with season three is probably going to be tracking down the other kids, like finding the other kids that that have escaped. You know, seeing what happened with them, because like if they're going to, because because now Stranger Things now has essentially a super villain, right? Yeah. In in the Mind Flayer, because they didn't, you know, they didn't kill the Mind Flayer, like nope. they kept him at bay. But they did not kill him. He's still alive and well in the Upside Down. And in fact, he's even more powerful, you know? Um, so Eleven can, you know, she closed the gate. But, like, now, like, and that almost fucking completely depleted her powers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, that fucked her up. Even at full strength. Like, she had all of that fucking, like, all that shit that she learned from Eight... Like, even at full strength, she barely closed it. Yeah. And, and she was fucking wiped. You know what I mean? So, like, she's not always going to be able to come in and, like, save the day. You know what I mean? Like, Eleven is not always going to be the answer. She's not always going to be the superhero. So, like, 
to me the the logical conclusion is we start we need to start looking for more of these super powered kids yeah you know um and that that i think is going to be interesting i, w- I want to see these kids get together and sort of like sort of coalesce and, and take down the upside down for good and i want to learn more about what the upside down is yeah and like i you know that that's that's something that has to be said about stranger things is coming into the inevitable you know they're going to do stranger things 3 you know there's you know next year we're going to get stranger things 3 there's no, no way around it and i and um, i'm cool that i'm cuz uh, i was a little worried um for season 2 uh in the beginning, like when i heard about it cuz i'm just like eh, are, you, are you guys going to like fuck up make it shit <laughs> yeah but it ended up it ended up uh still being very very good i still, again like we said i still prefer uh, the first the first season, but still, still prefer season one. But I, you know, season two is not as perfect as season one. But but it, I'm very interested in where things are heading, and I'm very interested in you know in seeing more of these characters. And uh, you know, I, I I bring it on, like bring on Stranger Things three. I I, I really want you know I want the kind of otherworldly shit to take more of a center stage in season three, mm-hmm. like. I, I want to know what's going on with that shit. And um, I want to know how they're going to handle that. Because as you know, as a writer, like it's it's hard to do that shit without just nothing but expository dialogue. So you have these characters now that now have bona fide experience with the Upside Down. Like, I want to see them go in and learn about it. Yeah. You know? Like, I want to see them really kind of know their enemy. And uh, it's cool that, like... It's cool that the the show has a unified villain now, and it's not just shit. When you look back on it, the Demogorgon's a little bitch <laughs> yep. in season one. Yep, he was just he was just one of many. You know what I mean? Like, like there there's there's you know he seemed like a big threat at the time, but no, there is a much bigger threat uh, in season two. So, anyway, I don't know if I have too much more to say about it. Do you? Shout out to my sweet baby boy Dart. No, oh, fuck Dart, dude. <laughs> fuck Dart. Not even at the end when they wanted you to like Dart. Not even then did I like Dart. I like Dart I, in the be- I, I like Dart in the beginning. In the beginning, he was cute. He was weirdly cute. Like a but pug. I was saying the whole time I was like, "Kill that bastard!" <laughs> oh yeah, because you know you that. Kill you, him. Yeah, even I was like, "This shit going to end badly." <laughs> you already knew. And the second he was sitting there munching down on the cat, I was like, "Nope." That is where my empathy for Dart ended. That's exactly. You actually <laughs> said that, like right as right, right as it happened. I was like, "Yep." <laughs> I was like, that is where, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. You see him munching down on the family cat? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> Fuck you. I, on some real shit. But uh, I like that he came back at the end there, you know, but I still, I was half expecting Dustin when he was like motioning them for, to walk forward. I was half expecting him to grab that baseball bat from Steve and bash him in the fucking Oh, no, nah, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> I think they wanted to play off like, like they, he did kind of create a bond with this, with this creature. Yeah, which is that's, well, that's and, you interesting know, that's, in its own thing. Yeah, well, that's not only is that interesting, but what is interesting, I guess, before we wrap this up, so it's all like a hive mind, right? And it seems like they were all kept alive by the fact that the gate was open. Mm-hmm. The things are dead, but it's not as if they like disintegrated. Like they're there still. Yeah, well, they, are they, they gonna they like come just back fell down at the bottom of the hole? So yeah are they gonna are they gonna come back are the demodogs all gonna like come back after you know the the gate inevitably is reopened that's a, in some way that's a good question one of them i think is in steve's fridge <laughs> or something like that <laughs> no, it's um it's like, actually in uh with the buyer's uh fridge the buyer's family yeah fridge. it's it's in like one of their fridges i'm just you know uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the the aftermath of this and it was nice it was nice in the epilogue to it was nice to kind of give these kids their day you know like it was nice to see these kids just be normal kids like yeah. at a at a fucking snowball like christmas dance you know so anyway i think that's going to do it for us todd talking about stranger things season 2 i enjoyed it you enjoyed it mm-hmm. we're looking forward to season 3 so get fucking dunked on you guys bye see you <laughs>